Good morning and welcome once again to another of our Sunday services drawn from our archives here at St Christopher's Pox Wrigley. Uh, archives of services that we've live streamed, that we've recorded, that we've produced ever since March of last year. And uh, the reason that we're not live streaming the worship which is happening today in church uh, is because our live stream team is having a well-deserved break. But I do believe and hope that we can each worship God uh, from home, being joined together and led by uh, some of the contributions on screen, uh, which are drawn, as I say, from uh, over the past year or so, and include myself and others too. In fact, uh, today uh, at different points, I'm joined by Anne Murphy, by Ian Malian, who will be doing our Bible reading, uh, by Lynn Bowden, who's leading part of the service, and by David and Sheila Garton leading the prayers. And as always with the prayers, there will be some references to things that were current when they were first made, which was uh, back in March of this year, uh, but they're still uh, very valid, uh, as is the rest of the worship, even though it originally took place at some point in the past. So I do welcome you and I do hope that you find uh, you meet with God in this service. Um, as for the theme, well in church we are up to uh, episode two of a summer series uh, about animals in the Bible and the theme today is the lion and incidentally I'm hoping to record that sermon and to make it available on our YouTube channel later today. The link will be also posted on our Facebook group and page uh, and on our WhatsApp group, or I could even email you the link if you get in touch with me. Um, on our uh, archive service that you're about to take part in, um, a similar, similarly scary creature, not a lion. Uh, well, you'll see which creature uh, is mentioned in our theme today, especially when we get to our reading and our talk. So uh, just before we uh, begin with our first hymn, I'd like to lead us in a prayer. Almighty God, to you be praise and glory forever. We thank you, Lord, that not only do you meet with us in worship, but you welcome, you enjoy our praises, however feeble they sometimes are, and whether they are uh, come from a gathering together in a building or from uh, hearts in different homes joined together by our faith in you. And so, Lord, we come to you this morning and we pray that you will meet with each one who joins in worship in this way. We ask this for the sake of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so our first hymn, The Power of Your Love.
face the knowledge of your love as you live in me Lord renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life in living every day going to continue our service in prayer. When we worship together, we have the opportunity to confess and say sorry to God for the wrong things we have done. And even though we're not in one place at this time, it's good to be able to do this regularly. So after the words of introduction, let's confess our sins to God using the following response version of the confession. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Declaration of God's Forgiveness. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I wonder if you spotted in that wonderful first hymn a clue about the Bible reading, the reading that I've chosen for us today. Well, whether you did or not, uh, you're about to hear it now, and I'm pleased to uh, uh, welcome uh, a recording, at least, of Ian Malian, who prepared this Bible reading for us. 
From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Can anyone measure the ocean by handfuls, or measure the sky with his hands? Can anyone hold the soil of the earth in a cup, or weigh the mountains and hills on scales? Can anyone tell the Lord what to do? Who can teach him or give him advice? With whom does God consult in order to know and understand, and to learn how things should be done? Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles, or care if you suffer injustice? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ian. Wonderful words from the prophet Isaiah. And uh, I was reflecting on those words earlier. And very early this morning, I got up to prepare this reflection for us. Like many people, I love walking. And I'm blessed to live in a place where walking is always a joy and a pleasure. I'm grateful for that, and also that I'm fit and healthy enough to be able to do it. Occasionally, I'll treat myself to a longer, or rather higher walk, climbing up White Nancy, or the Nab, or up towards Charles Head. Those steep inclines are punishing, but the view from the top is more than worth it. On a clear day, you can see for miles. Westwards towards the Cheshire Plain, eastwards into the Peak District, a glimpse of the majesty of the Creator, of eternity itself. Most days I'll take a shorter walk with our dog, Bell. I tend to do those walks as fast as I can, a kind of walking sprint. I enjoy the feeling of energy, of pushing myself and getting tired. And sometimes I go for a long walk, a full day's hike, or even a walking holiday covering many miles over a number of days. I might be able to power along the footpaths of Potch Wrigley on my short walks, but on those longer ones I can only manage a steady plod. Otherwise, I can't keep going for the whole distance. In our reading, there was a picture of these different kinds of travelling. The soaring flight, rising up high, the sprinting run, and the plodding walk. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. It's very familiar, of course, to compare the Christian life with the act of travelling. We often speak of our journey of faith, walking with Jesus throughout our lives. And any authentic journey of faith is bound to include a variety of different modes of travel. There will be those times when you are soaring on eagle's wings. And strangely, this can come at the most unexpected times. Over the years, so many people have told me that it was when things were really tough, when they were weak or broken and unable to go on, that they found themselves strengthened, yes, but more than that, carried by the Lord, even lifted up high, rising on wings like eagles, and given that glimpse of God's glory just when they most needed it. For most people, though, those Eagle's wings moments will not be an everyday part of the faith journey. More common, perhaps, will be those times when we're not exactly at the end of our resources, but they do feel stretched. We're under pressure. There's so much to be done. Keeping going is hard work. This, if you like, is the sprint, the run. 
The thing about running for most of us is that even if we can keep it up for a short time, we soon grow tired and can't go on. Again, these words of Isaiah promise the strength we need to go on when the going is tough. They will run and not be weary. But there's a danger here. God's promise of the strength we need is not an invitation to take on unrealistic amounts of pressure based on the assurance that God will give us the strength to cope. For many of us, that has become quite a puzzle in recent months. The familiar routines, the checks and balances have been removed. Some tasks and pressures are gone, yes, but new and strange ones have come in their place. God will give us the strength we need, but we should also ask him for wisdom about what we should and shouldn't take on. So, there'll be those precious moments where, with God, we soar with eagle's wings. More frequently, we'll find the strength we need when we're forced to keep going at a fast pace. But most common of all is the last mode of travel, the daily plod. They shall walk and not grow faint. Now, I hear you say, eagle's wings? Great. How wonderful to have those moments when we are lifted up to the heavens. Strength to keep running. Fantastic. What a wonderful promise that the Lord will keep us strong. But walking, the daily plod, just keeping going, that's not very exciting. Well, far from that, I think it's great news that God is, more than anything, with us in the ordinary, everyday times. A faith which doesn't have any impact on our everyday life. A God who only shows up on special occasions or in moments of dire need. That's not the faith nor the God of the Bible. Isaiah's promise is that God is with us for the long haul. And he calls us to be with him for the long term. And to let his transforming presence infuse every aspect of that journey of faith. From those soaring moments through testing times to those everyday situations where we just keep going. Let us now affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, together. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to watch and listen to prayers of intercession led for us today by David and Sheila Garton. United by our love for the Lord and our faith in him, let us bring before God our Father the needs of our times. Father, we commend to your wisdom all who wield power. Help them to encourage reconciliation rather than revenge. Cooperation in place of conflict, and flexibility rather than stubborn intransigence. We bring before you the relations between the US and China, between the UK and European Union, our climate destroying nations, and those suffering the consequences of climate change. In a moment of quiet, let us each bring to God a country on our own hearts, its leaders and people. We 
Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who minister your word and sacraments, Father. Keep them true to their calling, so that their lives and work may reflect your unselfish love and humility, and bring many into contact with you. In particular, we pray for Mark, the Bishop of Chester, and for your choice in the appointment of the bishops of Stockport and Birkenhead, Ian Bishop and Mike Gilbertson, the Archdeacons, David, our Vicar, and Lynn, ministering to us today. We pray too for the recently appointed vicars for Bollington and Reno, and for Steve Murphy and all his cohort of recently ordained and priested clergy. We pray too for our missionary partners, Megumi and Helen, and Johnny and Anne. We lift, lift up as well Street Pastor Mick in Burnley, recently in the news, and describing those amongst whom he works as too poor to die. Lord, we pray too for the children of your ministers, that you would keep your hand upon them draw them to yourself and lead them in the path you have destined for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, have compassion on all who are coming to terms with devastating news, facing a future following life-changing injury or illness, those suffering ill health in body, mind or spirit, injustice, and those mourning the loss of a loved one. We think of Sarah Everard's family and friends, the family and friends of Benelyn Burke and her two-year-old daughter, and the late District Mountain Rescue volunteer Chris Lewis and his wife. And in a few moments of silence, we pray for those known to us. We thank you too, Father, for the life of your daughter, Margaret Tate, and for her faithful service to Adlington and its church over so many years. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Father, we commend to your peace and joy our school and local businesses, our homes and all the homes in our community, especially those where there is conflict or distress. Dwell with us, we pray, so that our homes and your house, our school and village, may speak to every visitor of your love. And in these times of limited contact, may our emails, our Zooms, our FaceTime and phone calls carry the love of Christ to family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for your blessing on us during this Lent as we seek to examine ourselves and draw closer to you, that through self-discipline and prayer we may enter your stillness and know your will for us, both as individuals and as a church. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer which our Lord himself taught us. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.